What's up guys, this is Jeff and today I want to show you how to assemble this bike. If you haven't already watched the bike review, you can find it through the card at the top of this video or the link provided in the description section below. I apologize for the previous videos that only had music in them. Due to copyright issue, I had to replace all the sound with the just music. However, as I promised, I've created a new video that includes explanation and a closer look at the bike. Although, as Moody6 commented, even without explanation, the video itself is self-explanatory. Thanks for all supportive comments. I hope this video will help you during the assembly process. Before you start assembling the bike, it's important to note that the bike comes with a one-year warranty as mentioned in the manual. To use the warranty, you will need to submit the warranty form along the purchase receipt, the bike serial number located under the body, and the bike model you can find it on the frame. If the bike doesn't come with the manual, you can visit the manufacturer's website to access the required information and fill out the necessary details. To assemble this bike, you will require the following tools. Some parts of this video are common to all bikes. And in order to be able to give you a complete explanation, I've used several bikes. So don't be surprised if you see different bikes in some part of video. Okay, let's start. First, Check the box completely to make sure there is no any damage. If the box appears to be damaged, when opening it, make sure the bike parts are not damaged in the damaged area of the box. Avoid tearing the box completely when removing the bike. Why? The reason for keeping the box is that the bike may have been damaged during shipping and you plan to return it to the store and you will need the box for return process. Before returning the product, you can contact manufacturer customer service and ask him to send you a damaged part free of charge. Each store consider a return time policy for itself. For example, eBay or Amazon, you have 13 days to return the product make sure they get the part to you before this date, otherwise return the product. To open the box, use a half an inch deep cutter or knife and start by cutting the top and side of the box. Even you cut through the middle of the top, as long as your cutter blade deep stays within half an inch, it won't affect the bike. After opening the box, visually inspect the internal components including the wheels, front fork, rear derailleur and handlebar to make sure they are free of any damage. After making sure that the bike components are intact, you can take the bike out of the box and still avoid tearing the box. To safely remove the bike, it's recommended to bend your knees slightly and place the box vertically and start taking the bike out in a slow and controlled manner. Pay attention to your posture, do not put in too much pressure on your back to avoid muscle cramp. After removing the bike from the box, do not forget to check the inside of the box completely and do not throw away until you finish assembling the bike. Many times it happened that a small screw or nut was still hidden inside the box even under the flaps. For ease of assembly, remove all paper and plastic cover from the bike. However, be careful not to damage the paint on the body when removing them as this may lead to rust over time. Also be sure to remove any remaining tape from the body as it will change the bike paint over time. In the comments of my previous video, some have asked why I don't use a bike assembly tripod. Well, let me clarify that I assemble bike for regular folks, not experts. And I don't know what percentage of people have a bike tripod. Let's start to assemble training wheels. Each training wheels has two compression attachment on both sides. 
Place the training wheel in the desired location and simultaneously press the two compression attachment on each training wheel and push them inward to lock the training wheel in place. To remove training wheels, push the two compression attachment that hold the training wheels in place together and pull the training wheels out. If needed, you can gently shake your hand to make it easier to put the training wheels in place. Repeat the same process for other side of the bike. The training wheels mentioned in this bike model are not adjustable. Some people have asked about putting training wheel on the bike. Should the training wheels be in full contact with the ground or should there be a certain distance between the training wheels and the ground? Training wheels, also known as balance assist wheels, are designed to help children learn how to balance while riding a bike in the early stage. If the training wheels are set to completely touch the ground, children may not understand concept of balance. On the other hand, if the wheels are too far off the ground, children will always think they are falling. The recommended clearance for each training wheel is approximately half a centimeter or one wheel is in contact with the ground and the other wheel should be about one and one and a half centimeter above the ground. Training wheels without adjustable setting usually comes with this present distance when installed. Open the pedals outward until they are locked in place. If you ever need to return the pedal to original state, the process may vary depending on the specific pedal model. Here are a few common methods. Push the pedal down and rotate it. Push the pedal down, pull the plastic lock and rotate it. Pull the lever inside the pedal and turn the pedal. Also, a 15mm wrench is usually used to completely remove the pedals. If your bike's head tube has a cap, remove both the top and bottom caps. The handlebar and fork should be installed together in the correct direction. Look for a hole on the one side of the fork bar which will be on your right side. If there is a reflector on the fork, it will help you determine the correct installation direction. Make sure the reflector is facing forward. Some models may have instructions or marking on the rear fork indicating the correct installation direction. Insert the steam rod into the hole and press the appendage next to the steam. Push it down until you hear a clicking sound. Try to connect them by hitting the top of the handlebar. In some cases, the plastic at the end of the steam road might prevent proper locking of the steam road and fork. Use pliers or another tools to remove the plastic and try again until you hear the clicking sound. Once installed, make sure the handlebar is securely locked by pushing up and verify that it doesn't come out easily. Hand tighten the screw on the steam and then use wise grips or another tools to tighten it an additional half turn. Otherwise, over time, the plastic screw will loosen and the fork will move back and forward. Note that in this particular model, the height of the handlebar cannot be adjusted. If you need to remove the steam rod, first open the cap above the screw, apply pressure to the appendage, and simultaneously push the steam rod upwards. If the reflector is loose, align it horizontally and tighten it with the Phillips screwdriver. However, be careful not to over tighten the screw because it may cause the reflector to break.
Remove the screws located below the slit. Place the connecting rod of the slit in the correct orientation, then attach the support rod or retaining bracket and tighten the screws as demonstrated in the video. Place the bracket holder and then added a plastic guard and install the screws. Open the bolt on the bike frame, insert the screw into the hole on the connecting rod or bracket and position the doll carrying slit in the desired location. Then put the washer and tighten the nut. Open the two retaining screws on the rear frame and secure the retainers on both sides. And finally, double check all the screws and ensure they are tightly fastened. If the bike has a streamers, simply insert them into the handlebar hole and press them by hand. And make sure the streamers are installed in place and won't come off. If the seat reflector is loose, use a Phillips screwdriver to tighten the reflector screw until it cannot move. Make sure the reflector is level and positioned correctly and be sure not to over tighten the screw as it might break the reflector. I recommended installing the reflector close to the seat lock after adjusting the seat height. Note that I am mounting the reflector close to the seat for minimal height. Open the quick release seat post lever and place the seat post in the desired position. While holding the quick release seat post nut with one hand, 
Turn the quick release seat post lever a few times with the other hand until it feels tight. Close the quick release seat post lever regardless of height and direction of the seat and test the movement of the seat. If the seat is still move open the quick release seat post lever while holding the quick nut, rotate the lever one full turn and test again. Repeat this step until the seat stops moving. After the seat is secure, open the quick release seat post lever and adjust the height and direction of the seat and close the quick release seat post lever. If the seat continues to move after locking, you may need to tighten the seat clamp nuts. Also, if the seat angle needs to be adjusted, loosen the seat clamp nuts a little, change the seat angle and tighten the nuts again. The height of the seat can be adjusted according to the two age group of people under 18 years old and people over 18 years old. It's important to keep in mind that the body continues to grow until about 18 to 25 of age and then growth slows down. For children under 14, it's recommended to buy a slightly larger bike to accommodate their future growth and choose the right size for people over 18 years old. It should be noted that the age alone is not a determining factor and body size and proportion are more important. Some people may be 10 years old but have the same body size as a 13 years old. For bikes with training wheels, it's enough for children toes to touch the pedals and they can turn them. For bikes without training wheels, the seat height is considered appropriate if toes can touch the floor while sitting on the seat or one foot should be firmly on the ground while the heel of the other foot is flat on the pedal or one foot should be on the ground while the toes on the other foot are placed on the pedal and the foot is slightly bent if for any reason the seat post falls into the seat tube turn the bike upside down and gently tap the bike body to remove the seat post Another solution to prevent the post from the falling inside the seat tube is to install the seat post alone first and then attach the seat. This eliminates the possibility of the seat post falling into the pipe during the installation. At the end, it's necessary to check the work done and make sure that all bolts and nuts are properly tightened. When inflating tires, some people inflate the tire to the amount of air indicated on the tire. However, it's important to note that the value displayed on the tire represents the maximum air pressure that the tire can withstand. For most bikes, the recommended air pressure is between 25 to 35 psi. In another way, after inflating to 20 psi, sit on the bike to check the tire pressure. If the tire is not fully inflated, increase the amount of the air. Remember, the weight of the cyclist determines the amount of the tire inflation. To inflate the tire, first remove the valve cap and then put the air pump head on it. Sometimes this is difficult because by pressing the tube valve, the valve goes inside. If the tire is slightly inflated, first deflate it completely. Press your thumb on the back of the valve and place the air pump head on it. Inflate the tire halfway and make sure the tire is still on the rim. If part of tire pops out, release some air pressure, put the pops out area back inside the rim and reinflate it again. Over 90% of bike tubes have a Schrader valve while the rest have the Presto valve. For Presto valve, you either need an air pump that supports this type of valve or you need a converter to conversion Presto valve to Schrader valves. 
To inflate the Presta model, first tighten the nut holding the valve on the rim. Then remove the valve cap and open the nut above the valve all the way. Install the converter on it and inflate it like Schrader valve. After inflating, first remove the air pump head, then remove the converter and close the nut above the valve again. And finally, put the cap on the valve. If the nut holding the valve on the rim is loose, tighten it again. And finally, it's very important to teach children how to use brakes before riding a bike. Many accidents of children with trees or walls happen because they are not familiar with the braking system. So spend at least 10 minutes and teach them and don't forget the helmet. If you have any question, please provide a specific details or timestamp from the video so I can better understand your question and provide faster help. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel for support me and turn on all notifications to be the first to know about new videos. Feel free to visit other parts of the channel. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like button. Until next video.